Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I hope that the last few weeks have been great for you. Um, so for this week, I am very excited to be updating some of my swatch journals. So I picked up quite a fair bit of washi wilds in Japan. I picked up some fountain pen ink and I'm very excited to update my swatch journals with them basically. So I did also pick up some other stuff and like when I finally get around to um, uploading that Japan, Japan vlog which is taking longer than I expected um, there's a lot of footage to go through but anyway I thought that this would be a nice little filler in the meantime I do intend to do the vlog but it is really a lot of footage because it's I think we went to it five different places and it was two weeks so it does take quite a fair bit of time so anyway um, this is my I'm going to start at the washi first because there's a lot of it um, so this is my washi swatch journal and I'm not sure if I've shown this before but there are some sort of categories going on in here and then I got a whole bunch of tape I actually have no idea how many um, rows of tape I bought that I need to add into this journal so I'm just going to show you the tape real quick and kind of um, unwrap them as I go along so um, on the stuff that I didn't get while I was in Japan is uh, this two um, washi's from the Coffee Monsters. So this was gifted to me by a friend who didn't really like it that much and she knew I liked it a lot and I missed it on the sale. So she um, she very kindly sent it to me. And this one I did manage to get in the sale and um, I need to swatch and add to my collection. So I'm trying to find the point where there we go. So I'm going to open this up. So this is one of the um, basically themes of my collection. And then the rest is all for my trip. So it's a lot of it. I am just going to roughly um, organize them, so to speak, so that I have a rough idea of what is what. So this is... Uh, what is the... Oh. Okay, so this this, and then this is this, and these are all... Yeah. Okay, so all in all, I bought, let's see, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 rows of washi on this trip. It's kind of horrific how many rows I bought because I didn't even plan to buy that many rows of tape while I was there, but... Oops. Oh well, let me unwrap them one by one and kind of show them to you. So these are empty basics and empty basics go for a ridiculously high price um, outside of the fan basically for something that is basic. They essentially cost something like I think two to three dollars in Singapore but if I because I got them in Japan they will effectively work out to be about a dollar each I think a dollar plus so and this is a sing dollar plus so it's really ridiculous generally the I mean the general rule is that if something is Japanese it's probably cheaper in Japan which kind of makes sense because um domestic market prices so these are kind of metallic reticent so this um kind of a gunmetal y grey and this is more of a pure silver. Honestly, I wanted to get all of it, like the entire collection, but I couldn't justify it because I already have, you know, so much tape. So this is the metallics and this is going to go into the mostly plain kind of section. So this is the only plain ones that I bought because as you can see, I do have a lot of plain washi and I didn't want to um, kind of like add to it too much so I didn't go all out. I had a friend who basically got me to buy some for her back. Uh, buy some back for her from uh where, where did I get this? Oh I got these in Sekaido and Sekaido has a great collection of all the plain colours and so my friend basically asked me she basically tumpang like a bunch of them and essentially I think I bought I think there were like 17 rolls or something that I got for her, as in I helped her get, so that was kind of a lot. Anyway, so these two are the new additions, 
and as you can see they're metallic compared to the matte ones but I think they're kind of fun and they'll be nice to use for rough gifts and to layer so that is the plain ones those are the plain ones oh my goodness my English right so I'm gonna really really quickly update the coffee monsters one which um frankly is not from the trip but it did um this came just before I left so I didn't have time to swatch it and this came while I was gone so I haven't had a chance to swatch it yet either so I'm just gonna pull it out until I see the repeat which is here and I'm gonna tear it and just eat it around here okay sorry that was off camera give me a moment I haven't been filming in a while so I'm a bit rusty Okay, there we go. And then there's the world map one, which I love and adore. I use this for part of my, um, what do we call it? I used it for part of my January, uh, my trip spreads basically, and I really love it. So this is quite a long one, I think, because I'm still, I still don't see the repeat. And ah, uh, yes, okay, the repeat's here. But it's really quite a long one. And I'm just going to rip it here and then figure it out as I go along. I think I might need two rows or maybe three. We shall see. So I'm going to fit really closely to the edge of the other fella. Yeah, I'm going to need three rows each. So because I know I am inevitably going to get more the Coffee Monsters washi tape, what I'm going to allow myself to do here is to just roll over into the next page because I'm going to get more anyway and then I can spill over here. Alright, so this is this. And then it's on to all the other tape that I bought on my trip. So back to that. Um, so I'm kind of debating how to organize this and I'm a bit... On. So I'm just going to show you, I guess, based on place. So in Tokyo, I also picked um, this up. And this is uh, also by MT, uh, limited edition. And this I got from Itoya in Tokyo. And they had a bunch of... They didn't have the best selection when it came to like plain stuff. But they did have a selection of uh, limited edition things. So that was nice. So this is essentially, I think it's a rainbow of triangles. Yeah, it's like an entire rainbow and it goes on for quite a bit. So then it repeats about here. So it's quite long and I really like it. So I picked up a roll, um, even though I have no idea how to use this because there's so many colors, but I love rainbows, so I couldn't resist. Um, this would I feel for under patterns. So like more generic patterns so I will put it here with the rest of them more geometric and stuff so I do have some sort of categorizing going on here it's just not um, it's just not super formal or anything so this does um, overspill a bit but I think because it's so similar I can afford to sacrifice this bit and you still kind of get an idea of what the whole tape is. So that is um, my plain design. And in terms of plain geometric designs, I also got this in... Uh, I'm just torn on her You know what, I'm going to skip that. So that was all in Tokyo and I also got a bunch of things from um, the Traveler's Factory store. So this one I got in... Um, the, at the Tokyo Station store but it's also available at I'm pretty sure it's available at all their stores so I got this at the Tokyo Station and it says like Tokyo Metro and then I got these two at um, the Narita Airport store and this is a baggage kind of thing I'll open it up a bit and this is more like Japanese scenes and stuff so I got these two in um, Narita. So I'm not sure if these two are available elsewhere, but these two are in Narita and this one I also saw in Narita. So because they're Japan Japan stuff, I am going to put it in the Japan Japan section. 
So just open this up first. Right, so I'm gonna do the um, subway station one first, and it basically has all the different subway lines in uh, Tokyo, and it's quite a fair bit of them, as you can see. But I'm still yanking on it a bit. So this is actually for the Ginza line, and I'm going to actually cut it off here rather than have this head here. So tear this off here. And then I'm going to cut the head off, as weird as that sounds. So we actually stayed near um, Ginza Hibiya this trip, and that was pretty nice. It was very convenient. Um, it made it easy to get around because there were so many um, trains that we could take. So that's definitely something to consider if you're going to um, Japan and you know like where, where are you going and like how does that line up with your um, movements basically. Usually I leave that plan to my husband or I just give him like a list of places I want to go to and I'm like okay so you go figure that out. Which is I know not the best thing but you know it works for me. I'm sorry if you can hear like the train stuff, the, the cars honking outside. I don't know why they're doing that. So um, I didn't anticipate buying that much Japanese tape, like Japanese team tape. So I didn't leave that much room for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tape for it even though that was not intentional. Hopefully I will not run out of space but we'll see. Uh, so this is the Japan team one and again it's quite long. Actually this is very long. So it's about this long. So it's quite long and I might have to redo some things after this in terms of um, organization. <laughs> or maybe just you know stop buying as much tape. That is also an option. Okay, um, I'm going about this the wrong way because that is in the wrong order. So from here at the start so the problem with filming while putting down tape is that I struggle to actually get it down flat, um, straight like across the page because it is uh, because it's a blank page and then at an angle and all that it's a bit hard to see whether it's a straight line but I do my best Sometimes I do go back and like take up the tape and uh, rearrange it again. Especially with these where like the top is clear. It's great for layering but like it's kind of hard to see. So this isn't quite just Tokyo Tokyo I think because you know there is like um, there's like Mount Fuji in the background and all that though you can I guess get to Mount Fuji pretty easily from Tokyo so there is that. Um, then there is the other one that I got from Narita, which is this baggage thing. So I'm just gonna. So they have like immigration check, baggage claim, pictures of baggage. So it's very um, airport themed, which is appropriate, I guess, since I got this at the airport, like the airport store. I didn't get anything else from the airport store because I'm not really feeling the um, limited. Um, the location limited cover designs. I do really love the Kyoto one though, so if I ever get a chance to go to Kyoto, I'm going to put that up. So I'm going to put this with all the grungy stuff. I, I don't know if grungy is the right word, but you know, that's what I call it. So I think, I think it can fit in here. If I am a bit vicious. One really cool thing I liked about um, the Japanese subway system was that all the exit details were always in yellow and so it made navigation really easy even though like I'm not super good at language like, I just need to look for yellow signs to kind of figure things out so this is the country stuff and I am so glad I left another page for it because I'm go definitely going to need it alright so that is Traveler's Factory and then we went up to um, Hakodate in Hokkaido and that is where 
and Hokkaido they have a lot of merch of this um, long tilted which is um, I promise I'm not being vulgar it is a bird it's a literal bird and um, it's also known as the in Japanese I think it's the Shima and Naga or in, in Aga. I'm not sure which it is so it's a very cute little bird I don't, I'm not sure if I actually saw it because I did see birds that resembled it um, in passing but uh, I'm not sure if it's actually the bird because I had no one to ask so this is the bird in question it is super cute and it is quite, it's basically on every single little thing that you can find like basically any merch you can find has this bird on it so I'm trying to find a repeat point on this and getting a bit confused because it feels that it's not repeating okay found it yeah so it's quite quite a long stretch as well and it's basically just I mean I had to get it because it was basically an entire washi roll of like these little cute fellas so the problem now kind of arises with where to put them down because I don't really have I guess they're technically Japan but they also look, it's more like nature -y. so I think I will put it down with um, the flowers actually and maybe I'll put it on top here and let it run and uh, I'm not sure why I took the entire stretch out actually because um, it's not really necessary but uh, it's cute so it's alright so that is the birds and then after that, we were in... So there was Hakodate, I didn't buy anything Niseko, I didn't buy anything Otaru But uh, as in terms of washi, but I did buy a lot more washi in Sapporo So in Sapporo, one of the things we did was visit the Sapporo Beer Museum um, This was more for my husband than for me Because I am not really a beer drinker, unfortunately Or fortunately, I'm not sure I am quite fussy about when I actually drink beer because um, I don't really love the taste. I know that that sounds blasphemous, especially I guess if you are European, or maybe it just sounds blasphemous to stop. But um, it just isn't really my taste. So um, I occasionally drink it when I have like fried food in winter or uh, or like colder climates. But I don't really drink it otherwise. So, but I couldn't resist the washi. So one of the washi's I got was basically. I'm sorry if there's like a lot of background noise. Um, this is the Sapporo beer labels, which looks kind of cool, but it's a very short repeat, so not a concern. I'm gonna put this with the. Um, I'm not sure if I want to put this with the weird stuff or the, you know, the more I guess grungy stuff or Japan stuff, because it kind of falls into both. So I think that I will put it with these because it kind of bites. I'm gonna put this on top here. Okay, I need to get it right. Okay. So I'm gonna put it there. And then the other one that I thought that I liked a lot more was um, of the different ads they have printed over the years. So these are the more vintage kind of ads. And it's very different from, I guess, the ads that we're used to seeing. So I kind of wanted a whole row of it. And it's really a very, very long row before you get to a repeat. So it's pretty cool. Like, they had a whole wall of um, this ad pictures on it as part of the museum. And it's quite cool. So there's kind of free entry there and there is... Um, there is a guided tour but it gets quite crowded or maybe it was the season that we were there so what we did was we just we kind of just went with it and went for the you know we just went for a free one and just yeah just did that instead so i'm gonna put this with the japanese stuff because it's clearly japanese and hopefully i don't run out of space because um it is a lot Yeah, that was a uh, very wasteful tear. But I do like the crunchiness of the tear though. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep this mostly straight so that I maximize the space. I think I need four rows for this. Oh, I really hope I don't tear this lady's face. 
Okay, I didn't, I didn't really tie that much of a face, so mostly a hair. Okay, so that is that. This is, doesn't, I know it doesn't quite belong, but it's very clearly Japanese, so I'm keeping this here. Alright, so that is the Sapporo Bay Museum. So on my second last kind of like full day, we went to um, Daimaru Fuji Central and it was amazing. They had like literally the best um, watch collection that I saw on the entire trip. So um, yeah, I basically went with quite, quite a fair bit of washi. Like this was the amount of washi I was expecting when I went to like Itoya or like Sekai, not really Sekai but Itoya or Hands or like Loft. I was kind of expecting like this much of washi, but I feel like maybe, just maybe, I mean, I'm just speculating here that because um, both Loft and Hands are kind of like lifestyle stores, so they are not focusing as much on the you know stationary aspect of it as opposed or rather they can't really focus entirely on the stationary aspect of it because they have so much else going on with the household goods and the makeup and the and the you know all the other things the beauty products the the bags the luggages um i forget what else they have there but i think that more or less encapsulates it that it doesn't make sense i guess for them to um have that much washi anymore but I was quite disappointed with the selection uh, it also might be the outlets that I chose to go to because I mean these are chain stores and they might have um, different um, varieties at different stores and whatnot but yeah I was a bit sad about it so uh, Itoya did have a, have a fairly decent collection of washi it was just that they were um, they were the limited edition stuff, which is really cool. I do like the fact that it was limited edition, but um, they weren't the ones I was looking for. I was looking for this um, collab series with um, Soso, and basically it was in part because of my friend who wanted, um, she wanted this one, and shipping to Singapore would have been exorbitant. Not exorbitant exorbitant, but I think it was like nine dollars to ship it, which is not cheap for a washi. So um she said like you know, can you keep an eye out for me? And I said, Okay, sure, why not? Uh, I'll just keep an eye out because I do like going to station stores anyway. And yeah, so I kept an eye out, went to quite a number of places and all of them didn't have it until like the second last day where I went to one and I was just right there and I was like, What? Like me like what? Yeah, so anyway, um, so this, uh, so I got four from the social collab with um, MT and they're like four of them are foil and they're really pretty. Oh no. And then this one is just like a plain pattern. And then I also found this, which is by, I think it's by a Japanese designer, which is really cute. Uh, this is a bit pricier. This is, I think, five ish or six five ish i think but these were about three dollars each this was no the foil ones are about three dollars each and honestly if i were to get them here they would probably run to like six so kind of horrific but kind of glad that i didn't that i managed to find it anyway um all right so let me get back to the swatching so this is going to go here with the other geometric stuff i really like this colorway it reminds me of mixing um, Winsor & Newton's, I, what do you call that? Mixing Winsor & Newton um, Opera Rose with, what's the other fellow called? With um, Lemon Yellow Deep. Like it has that kind of vibe. It's very clean, very bright. Makes me happy to look at. I'm not going to do a full repeat of this because it's a, it's a pattern and the colors are the same. It's kind of like how this is a full repeat, but um, this is because it varies across. So I'm just going to fill up the space here. Then um, for these, I am a bit lost as to where to put it, I guess. So this is very Chinese New Year, see? Like, look at this. It's like go fall and it's so pretty. Um, I don't think I will put it here because it does feel a bit too Asian. <laughs> I am going to put it here with the Japanese stuff thing, so um, I don't think I will do a full repeat because it's slightly over a page, but I will do just enough to fill up the page.
Alright, my lunch is here, so I'm gonna get lunch first and then I will come back and continue this in a bit. Alright, so I'm back and I have four models of what she did um swatch and you know categorize. So the first one is this um this is also so so and I'm gonna put this on Japanese simply because it feels very Asian. It doesn't the go for it kind of makes it feel more Asian than just pure hundred percent floral. So I'm gonna put this here and again because the repeat isn't super um not that it doesn't really change that much so I'm just gonna put like one strip also because I'm running out of space here. So that's it. Um I do like this one. Also feels very um festive. Then there is this which is it kind of gives me Victorian vibes. I don't know why I say that, but this has a towel kind of effect. And I won't consider it Asian simply because it feels more vintage. So I'm kind of struggling to see where to place it. I could place it with the geometrics, I guess. It's not quite, or maybe with the patterns. It's not quite um, grungy, so to speak. Um, but it's not really into like the geometrics. So I think I'll put it with the patterns here, even though it's very colorful and foily for that. But actually, that kind of makes sense because I do have some very subtle foil going on here. So I'm just going to put this in here. No, it's not going to fit. Add right. So I'm just going to put it on the next page then. Just a small little swatch because, again, it doesn't change that much um, across the pattern. Then I also have this, which um, I am actually not sure what this is. Um, let's take a look. So it's kind of naturey I feel because it kind of looks like um birds and flowers to me. So I guess this would go under the florals because that would make sense. And this time I'm just gonna fit it up here. Again, there isn't that much variation in it that I want to swatch the whole thing, so I'm just gonna put a little bit here. Mm. Alright, straight enough. Yeah. So that is that for the so, so And then I have the more expensive one here, which is a bunch of houses on a kind of wintry landscape. So this is unlike what I usually get. So I'm kind of struggling once again to figure out where to put it because it is a landscape and I don't really have landscapes. Yeah, I really don't have landscapes, so I guess what I can do is that I can create a new category for that or I have to put somewhere, someplace. So it does kind of fit with this where this is a bit landscapey, but this is also kind of... Mm, I'm kind of struggling. Alright, I think what I will do is that I will flip a couple of pages because I know that I'm going to acquire more TCMC. So I am going to fill a couple of pages until I have maybe two pages at the end. And then I'm going to put this down. So this repeats around... Oh, this is quite long actually. Uh, okay, it repeats around here. So I'm going to tear out here then. For this one, I kind of want to swatch the whole thing because it does have differences in the pattern that are quite obvious. So I'm just going to leave that down here and tear. Oh, that was not a very clean tear. And then put it down below. No, this is not straight. I kind of went back and forth on this because um, there was another one that I liked that was similar but it was more springtime but I ended up not getting both because it's just, I couldn't justify it. Too expensive. Alright, so that is um, the 15 rows of washi that I got in this trip or swatch. Um, next up, I'm going to update my filming pen ink swatches. So I brought this with me when I travelled so that I could see um, what I already had 
uh, with the one shoe I didn't really reference it that much though it did stop me from buying stuff that was too close to this um, but for the inks it was pretty helpful I'd say so I have um, let me just clean up a bit here first right so I bought um, five bottles of ink on this trip um, one in Tokyo and two in Otaru, which was a limited edition kind of thing, location limited kind of thing. And then I bought another two more at Daimaru Fuji Central. So I'm going to swatch all of them really quickly now and hopefully it doesn't, it's not too messy. So this, for this swatch book, I do it in order of um, when I purchased it. So I'm going to do that. Uh, the first one that I bought um, was the Tokyo one, which is a collaboration between Paper Tree, which is a stationery store I visited, and a uh, and Ferris Wheel Press, which I mean, we, if you know Fountain Pens, you know Ferris, Ferris Wheel Press. This is my first bottle from them actually. So it's very pretty. It's called Glimmering. It's called Glimmering Grage, and it's a grey ink with. Uh, Shimmer. I don't usually get shimmer inks, but this was pretty special and I really like the box because the box basically um, Yeah, the box basically took me over to buy it. Basically the design is based on elements of their store So this is like the door that you open to get into go into the storefront This is the wall of ink bottles that they have in the store This is like the shelf and the table with all the display that you see in the store. So I really liked the box, so this kind of tipped me into buying this instead of the other two um, non-shimmer colors that they had. Plus, you know, Ferris Wheel Press is known for their glitters, so I figured why not. So I'm just going to shake this up a bit so that um, it's all well and mixed before I swatch it. And let's see, is it? Okay, I think that, that does it. Good enough job. It's a bit buggy now, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna do a quick swab here. And then, so this is my buy when I bought it. This is by Ink Family. So once again, I'm gonna shake it up again just in case to get. To make sure that like, the swatch actually has glitter on it. And then I'm just going to do it here. And clean off. So I'm using the butt of my um, glass pen. I actually bought a fancier glass pen while I was in Otaru, but um, I'm not using that here because uh, it has a thinner um, tip at the end. So this is about it actually for this one ink. Uh, this is, I don't know where to write because there's stuff here. So I guess I'll do this. And then I'm going to move this over to dry. And I'm going to grab a black pen. What are my black pens? Alright, so the next ink that I bought was in Otaru and in Otaru, this is also where I got my glass pen. So there's this store called um, Kitaichi Glass and they basically work with Sailor to have um, five colours based around like the whole um, Otaru and um, glass kind of thing. So I bought two out of the five. I didn't buy all five because it just I, I couldn't justify it basically. Um, I got two. One is um, the Sunny Canal of Otaru, and the other one is Otaru Canal in the evening. So I mean, Otaru Canal is basically the place where you go to when you're there. It's I guess kind of like the main tourist district, so to speak. So um, I honestly found it kind of cold and I kind of just went there and I was like, okay, I've seen it, it's freezing, can we move on? Because it's just filled with so many people, but it's, it is a very pretty place. 
So this is a Darren Canal, which is more orangey than I expected. The thing is that the swatches were under really heavy um, lighting, which is quite common in uh, retail spaces. So I wasn't sure how the colorized swatches were, and sadly we weren't allowed to try them, so I had to kind of go off based on the swatches alone. So the other one that we got is Sunny Canal of Otaru, which is actually more my husband's thing than mine. Um, he said that it looks like compacti, but I disagree entirely, and I think I'm about to be proven right. Uh, I don't think I have a compacti swatch here simply because it's not my ink, but this one I feel like I'll use, so um, I'm swatching it as well. So this is, these are really the two inks. And this is, um, so this is Kitaichi Sega. Then the name is so long. And then this is Alright, so I'm gonna let this dry before I flip the page. But as you can see here there's like glitter in this um glimmer bridge, which makes it really really pretty. Uh this needs to dry before I can swatch the remaining two inks on the next page. So let me take a look at the other notebook. Alright, this is also not dry yet, so I'm a bit stuck right now. So I'm gonna pause this here. And I will um, continue filming once it's dry. So the other two inks that I bought are from where is this called? From Daimaru Fuji Central. So this is a Central Original. So it's like this is like an original ink to them, as far as I can tell. And I don't know which maker they work with for this, or if it's their own line. No, wait, they work with Sailor. Sailor works with a lot, yeah. So they work with Sailor to do this, and they have a series of various inks for, um, that represents, I guess, different uh, parts of Hokkaido, I guess, or different parts of Japan, I'm not sure. But, uh, no, this is um, Sapporo's, seven, 70 colors of Sapporo, apparently if I am not um, misreading this. So, this is Renga, and I think what it is, is based on the images, it is supposed to represent like the red brick um, buildings that you see here and there. So, yeah, I thought that it was quite a unique color and I wanted to get that. There were a lot more colors, but I basically couldn't justify getting all of them as tempting as it was because each one kind of works out to around like I think about $20 each and you know money doesn't grow on trees so maybe for my next trip or something I'll get another one and slowly build up my collection from there but I just can't justify getting them all. Then the other color that I got was um, from Kuretake. So this is the Kuretake um, in cafe, Art Nouveau, uh, Art, how do you pronounce this? It's French. Art Nouveau color ink. So this is concrete gray. So um, I actually tested this in Singapore before and I liked it. Um, I liked a lot of the colors in the collection, but I ended up just getting the one um, concrete gray because it was the most similar to things that, all right, it was the least similar things that I already had. So it's just grey, which I know sounds really boring, but I wanted a nice dark grey. So I'm just going to swatch that here. And yeah, I really like it. It's a bit of a bluey grey, I feel, which is a bit different from what I have. I would say just based on this before it dries, it looks quite similar to Kobe um, 59 and Lexington grey, a few sides in between. It's like it has the almost has a depth of color of 59, but um, it looks more blue. It's a bit greenish actually now that's trying, so it's quite interesting. Anyway, again, there's no space, so I'm just squeezing it at the bottom here. Right now, let me take a look at the other page and hope that it's dry. 
Okay, this is largely dry except for this one blob here. So I'm just gonna... Alright, oops, my camera kind of died on me because I ran out of um, phone space. So um, just to wrap up this video real quickly because I didn't realize it was recording and I already finished swatching everything. Uh, this is essentially my swatches for uh, my Japan trip stuff, the fountain pen stuff, and the um, washi tape at, at the very least. I did pick up some metallic paint, but because that swatch journal is a work in progress, I can't really just update it just like that, like on screen, because it is quite an evolved process, because it's just not there yet. So I will probably um, do another chat ups on it or something as I um, swatch. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed looking at all these new inks with me and all the new washi with me. I'm really excited to use them and I will catch you in the next video. Hopefully, I will have gotten the Japan vlog together by then. And, you know, so that I can also clear up space on my phone so that um, videos won't, start, won't get cut off halfway while I'm recording. So that's about it for me. Um, I hope you have a great week ahead and... Take care of yourself. Bye.